This is your 3-minute radiation fallout forecast and sun update for Friday, July 6, 2012. Currently, solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, are slamming into our planet. When the Earth is impacted, they not only cause beautiful auroras, but they can also affect our climate by causing our atmosphere to produce violent storms and chaotic weather patterns. They also heat the Earth's outer mantle, causing tectonic plates to shift, resulting in earthquakes. These solar flares can also affect our space satellites, radio transmissions, and can cause instant power grid failure. It is also important and most recently learned that in temperatures over 97 degrees Fahrenheit, backup diesel generators for nuke plants cannot function. And now for the forecast. In Canada, radar imagery from Environment Canada shows scattered rain west of Sudbury through Ottawa and from Halifax through St. John's. Due to the current positioning of the jet stream and tropopause, all precipitation moving through Ontario and Quebec over the weekend should be treated as high risk. In the U.S., radar from IntelliCast shows scattered rain in 24 states, from Idaho down to Texas, from Louisiana and the southern states up to Indiana, and moving across the upper peninsula of Michigan. Most of this pattern will continue in the west and south over the weekend. Due to the positioning of the jet stream and tropopause, the biggest concern for fallout would be Alaska, northern New England, and St. Louis to Indianapolis. Pattern changes will bring cooler temps to the U.S. next week, but fallout risk will increase for the Midwest. In Europe, the following western European cities have rain forecasted for the weekend, as well as other precipitating factors creating a high-risk fallout scenario. London, Paris, Stockholm, Berlin, and Vienna. Recent spikes in radiation levels across the U.S. and parts of Canada could be attributed to the wildfires out west. A quarter century after the Chernobyl meltdown, forests surrounding the Ukrainian nuclear power plant still are soaked with radiation. Cesium and other radioactive materials released after the accident are locked up in trees, mainly the bark and needles of Scott's pines. Some of the highest concentrations of fallout were found in Boulder, Colorado, reported by the USGS from samples taken a year ago. We have no idea what those levels are now, but we should have more information soon as independent researchers step up and fill the gap and will be publishing recent up-to-date findings in the next few months. This message has been brought to you by Radchik and the Orion Talk Radio Network. We care about you because your government doesn't. Stay safe.